Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to configure FME server to consume data from any sensor. To do that, I'm going to use um, I'm going to use FME. Um, I'm going to use the site Patchby, which is a portal for different sensors that people are plugging um, information in. So this is quite an amazing site. There's just thousands and thousands of different uh, sensors that people have uh, are publishing to this site. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find one, and we're going to consume the data. It doesn't matter what sensor you pick, the um, the process is going to be the same. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to look for a sensor in Toronto. Okay, uh, here take the first one. There's got some guys got plant moisture, and um, and again the the um, every sensor has a location. So I'm going to get the location as part of the sensor feed. This one's not moving, but it doesn't really matter. The the uh, the, the um, whole process is the same. So you'll see he's got a number of sensors here, and you can even see where he watered his plant. What I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the cactus one because um, that's kind of neat, and so I'm going to add a trigger. Okay, so what I'm going to do now all I need to do is post in the HTTP of a server. And um, and that's it. And then I say when value changes. So um, so now my task is what does this URL look like? And so that's what I'm going to do now to build it. So so um, first thing, let's look at a workspace I have here. That um, okay, we'll cancel this. I have a generic workspace that I use for all sensor data. And um, all I do is I simply log it to Google Fusion Tables. So I'm using Google Fusion Tables as my scratch space to server it online and. and um, I can also see it from my desktop. So it makes a perfect place for the server to write something where then I can get at it um, from my authoring environment. Okay. So this is, um, I'm going to change this to cactus. Okay. And um, you'll see the attributes. I just have, I just have one called info. Okay. I don't even know why. So let's get rid of that one just for, to be complete. Okay. So there you go. I have one called info. I changed the name to cactus. And um, and that's all I there is to it. Now before I run this, let's go look at my Google Doc. So you'll see that um, right now um, I only have a generic sensor. So wh when I run this Google Fusion, when I run this workspace, I'm going to add another Google Fusion table. Okay. So um, initially, let's look at my format parameters. I'm going to say create the table. So I'm getting it set up here because I'm going to ultimately publish this to FME Server. Drop existing table. Yes. So I say okay. And now I'm going to run this. And I'm just writing in just junk to that info table. I just want to get it going to, uh, okay, so now the table is um, completed once this finishes. Okay, so there you go. It's completed. It's in there. And um, so now I'm going to um, simply say, um, no, I don't want to create the table again. No, but we will truncate the table. I'm, I'm only interested for this um, thing to only keep the last record, the last post, because again, I'm just authoring how to configure this to consume the sensor. So I say no, and I run this again on my desktop to verify that it's all right. Okay. Okay, and it's successful. So there you go. So now I'm going to publish this to the server. Okay, and the server is um, is um, running in AWS, Amazon. So we have this FME server running in the cloud. Okay, and my password. Okay, so I say next. It's going to connect to the server. Um, let's create a new repository called Cactus. So everything's clear. Okay, next and sure. Save generic. Let's call it save cactus sensor data just for fun save cactus data data to google fusion tables next and there we go okay successfully retrieve that's next next okay now here you'll see in fme 2012 we have this brand new um, service called the subscription service Okay, so we'll go back to, this is part of the notification and real-time capabilities of FME Server 2012. What this is, is I can configure this workspace to run, to be triggered by an event that happens on that subscription service. So let's go back to the server again, and we'll, we'll look here, and you'll see that there's this, under this notifications, you're going to see there's a number of topics. I'm going to create a new topic called Cactus. And I'm also going to make a workspace be subscribed to that topic. So whenever anybody publishes to that topic, i.e. that sensor is going to publish to that topic, 
the workspace is going to be run and consume the data from that sensor. Okay, now how do I do that? Well, I do that within Workbench. Okay, so here I go. I'm simply going to turn this on here. Say edit. Okay, I'm going to look at the topics. Oh, I want to create a new topic. I want to call it cactus. Okay, like that. And I'll turn it on. You'll I could select multiple topics, but in this case, I'm only selecting one. I say OK. I say OK. And I publish. OK. And when that's complete, let's go back and look at the FME server. You'll see now, if I refresh this, OK, you're going to see a new topic, Cactus, and you're going to see that this workspace is triggered to run whenever something is published to that topic. So that's as easy as it is. You don't actually have to do anything. Um, um, on the server. You can do it fully from Workbench. Okay, so now we're going to use the REST API to test that that actually works. If I go to my jobs in history, what we should see is we should see something about save cactus data here in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the FME server REST API. I'm going to log in. I'm going to grab my token. Okay. I'm going to paste my token right here. Okay, log in, notifier, topics, cactus, and we'll just send some dumb content that, that this is coming from the REST API. Okay, I'm going to say publish like that, and it says it's the, public, it, the notifications was successfully published. Okay, so now let's go to Google Docs. Okay. We'll click on Cactus, and we should see this was coming from the REST API, so that worked. If I go to the Jobs Management over here, and I refresh History, you're going to see a Save Cactus. Okay, there it is, Save Cactus. Okay, I obviously have another sensor running, so I have Save Cactus right there. So now the next step is, okay, it works from the REST API. I want to check it from something, another program outside of FME Server. So I'm going to copy this. I have another process running here called HTTP Client. This is running um, not in the virtual machine or in Windows. This is actually running on the Mac. And uh, I'm going to paste this in here. Okay. And um, this enables me, again, to test that this is working step by step. First, I test it within FME Server. It works great. Now, um, let's look at the request. A body. Now, I'm going to say this. Um, data came from the HTTP application. Yay. Okay. So I've done a post. There's the thing. Okay. I simply say send. Okay. That was a send. And here's a response. 200. That's good. I go back to my job management. I refresh. And you should see that Cactus is there. Let's go look at the Google Docs Fusion table. Cactus. Okay, I'm getting too many of these here. Let's get some. Okay, and this data came from the HTTP application. Yay! Okay, so there we go. So, um, and that one, that was a previous view. So now we're, what we're going to do is we're going to take that HTTP request from the client and we're simply going to paste that in that site, PatchB. Okay, so now that is the URL that we paste here. Okay, when value changes, and you'll see that this is a big long URL, I just paste it in there, just double check that it worked okay. I say save, and now whenever that cactus changes, I'm going to get um, a value. Okay, so now to test it, well, we might be lucky. Let's go here. And um, nope, not there. Sorry. Let's go here and refresh and see if uh, if we got another one. Sometimes you get lucky right away, but um, we'll go here and we'll know as soon as we open this if we've been lucky so far. This came from the HTTP app application, yay! But anyway, we can test it by simply going debug, and this is going to trigger the thing immediately. We go back to we go back to the job management and refresh history. And um, there should be a cactus one there. We go to Google, we go to here, we can refresh this, and now you can see the data that came from that device. Okay, so now what? Okay, now I have um, the data, I'm successfully. Uh,
processing that sensor data and moving it to Google, um, Google Fusion Table. So now the question is, well, how easy is it to parse that, and then what do I want to do with it? Well, I'll show you how to parse it, and then um, just to um, complete the, the story. But then really the question is now, where do you want to move it? Um, because you could move it anywhere, and, um, and uh, away you go. So anyway, okay, so remember that data is in the Google Fusion Table, so I simply say add reader, Google Fusion Table spatial, uh, parameters, okay, Table list, date to ta I simply log in. Table list, there's cactus. Okay, I say okay, and um, that's all I want to do. I say okay, and there we go. Now I can send this directly to the logger. Okay, it takes a second to connect. There we go. I connect this to the logger to have a look, and um, with any luck, there's been a post from that device, so we will see real data go by. Okay, there's, there's always going to be one record. Um, sometimes there might be zero if you catch it just at the right time when it's in the when it just finished. There you go. Type change. So there you go. Well, it kind of looks like JSON, but it's not really um, because it's got. But we can fix this with FMB. First, we're going to put in a JSON flattener. Okay, some flattener because the first part's JSON, and um, it's almost JSON, so it's info. Yeah. Okay. And now, if we log it, you're going to see I'm going to have something called body. But I also want to expose um, body attribute exposer. Okay, so we'll body. Okay, and now we will run it again, and um, you'll see it's almost JSON. Body is almost JSON, but it has slashes in it that I got to get rid of. Um, okay, so. That's all there is to it. See, body has slashes. If I get rid of the slashes, this is actually JSON. You know, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of the slashes, and then we're good to go. I'm not sure why it has slashes, but hey. So we're going to do that with a string replacer. Okay, put that down here like this. And all we want, the attribute we're looking for is body. And we want to hex the front. We want to get rid of that. We will replace it with nothing, okay? And then I'm going to add another JSON flattener, this time on body rather than info on body. And now I will have, when I log, you're going to see that I'm going to have all the values of the device. And so then what I'll do is I'll just convert one to it. I'll grab the lat long just so you can see um, what we've done here. Okay, so we'll say run, and with any luck, um, I did that right, and you're gonna see all the values, um, the attributes flattened out as we would hope for with the JSON flattener. Look at that, they're all there. So, okay, so here's all the attributes. We have body, of course, environment description, moisture level of plant, the feed name, the uh, environment ID, the location, so I'm going to grab that, the location name, plant moisture, um, it's all there, it's all there. Okay, there's a, the data stream URL, um, you know, the max value, the current value, and um, things like that. So let's grab the location, and um, just so we can turn it into a, 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 a 2D point, point placer. I want to expose um, I expose a few like that and you can get the idea you can expose as many as you want and now what I'm going to do is simply set the X and Y like this set attribute X to long set attribute Y to lat okay like that Okay, so there you go. So I save this. Okay, like just like that. And um, now we're good. Okay, now when I run this, you're going to see that I actually have um, the values. You know, it's going to pop up. The logger is going to have, you're going to see I have a spatial feature. Yep, and when I 
connect this to Visualizer, dun, 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 you will have a point. Okay, so then and um, and then I would be able to you know grab whatever I wanted to Google Fusion Tables or wherever I want. Um, and th that's it. So um, whoa, okay, and there it is. And if I go like that, you can see all the attributes. And uh, there we go. So that's it. That's how easy it is to add um, a sensor to FME Server 2012.